Hello, everyone, and thanks for attending today's webcast, Tips, Tricks, and Other AHA Moments Using Expediter Within Topaz Workbench. Before we begin, we'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your screen are multiple application widgets you can use. All the widgets are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop space. You can expand your slide area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner of the slide area. Today's presentation consists of a video and slides. For an optimal viewing experience, please ensure that you have checked the system requirements along with bandwidth considerations. We recommend using a wired internet connection and closing any programs or browser sessions running in the background that could cause issues. Webinars are bandwidth intensive, so closing any unnecessary browser tabs will help conserve your bandwidth. The webcast is being streamed through your computer, so there is no dial-in number. For the best audio quality, please make sure your computer speakers or headset are turned on and the volume is up so you can hear the presenters. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the help link located via the question mark widget at the bottom left of your screen where you will find details about system requirements and frequently asked questions. If you experience a blank screen during the webcast, please try refreshing your browser or pressing F5. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can submit them through the Q&A widget. We will try to answer these during the webcast, but if a fuller answer is needed or if we run out of time, we will reach out directly. Also, notice the Learn More widget. Here, we've added a link to a newly published blog, Forget ISPF Debugging, How to Use Expediter Within Topaz Workbench, as well as a link to the next upcoming webcast in our Did You Know series, Strobe Integration Points, taking application performance management to the next level on October 26th. We also like to encourage everyone to fill out our survey before the end of today's presentation, and by submitting your response, you will automatically be entered to win a $50 American Express gift card. There will be, excuse me, there will be three lucky winners selected from today's respondents. We are extremely pleased to have as our speakers today CompuWork Solution Consultant Ward Matthews and Senior Solution Engineer Ed Ganaway. We will also be joined by CompuWare Product Managers Glenn Everett and Glenn Galler, who will assist during the Q&A, so make sure to bring your questions. With that, I'd now like to welcome and hand things over to Ward and Ed. Thank you, Janet. And I'd also like to thank everybody that's online with us today. We really appreciate your time. Before I get into the agenda, I would like to take just a minute and speak briefly about Expediter and the Topaz Workbench. I'm pretty sure most people online today uh, are very familiar with Expediter as CompuWare's mainframe testing and debugging product. You may be less familiar with the Topaz Workbench. The Topaz Workbench is an Eclipse-based IDE that CompuWare developed to, to modernize the mainframe user interface. And as you would suspect, all of the CompuWare mainframe products can be hosted and utilized within Topaz. But also, because Topaz is developed in Eclipse, it supports any other product that supports Eclipse. Mainframe, non-mainframe, CompuWare, even non-CompuWare products. As long as they support Eclipse, they can all uh, work together. Uh, now, a couple of points I did want to make about Topaz. The base Topaz workbench, uh, which we'll primarily focus on on the first part of the presentation, uh, is available to any maintenance current customer with CompuWare. So if you or your company has any currently licensed CompuWare mainframe product, you are fur fully uh, entitled for use of the CompuWare Topaz workbench. Uh, CompuWare has also come up with some chargeable options for Topaz, uh, Topaz program analysis, Topaz for enterprise data, and Topaz performance management for Java or separate add-on components of Topaz. The second uh, portion of the presentation does focus on utilizing many of the capabilities that are available with Topaz program analysis being used with Expediter. So I just wanted to point that out before we got into the agenda. So quickly just working through the agenda here, first part of the uh, presentation will focus on how to set up Expediter within Topaz. Uh, we'll also review all the right-click commands that are available uh, with Expediter within Topaz. Uh, it will also highlight Topaz's ability to remember breakpoints and watch variables. And review actually one of his favorite commands within Expediter to record and playback capabilities to res resolve add-ins and actually shorten the test cycle. 
and then also take advantage of Abendade's fault diagnostic information, believe it or not, from just a single click away. We'll then move to the second phase of the presentation where we'll focus primarily on capabilities provided by Expediter being used with Topaz program analysis. Uh, during this portion of the demo, Ed will show you how to utilize Runtime Visualizer, Topaz program analysis, navigate the code using the outline view, as well as take advantage of information provided within the logic flow and data flow of the structure charts. And then finally, we'll go back to the Expediter to view the code coverage reports to confirm all the new or modified code has been tested. And at the conclusion of the presentation, we'll open it up for some Q&A, so please make notes during the presentation. So without any further ado, it's now going to show us how to get into an Expediter perspective in Topaz. Thanks, Ward, for the introduction. There are several ways to open the Expediter perspective. One is to go up to the CompuWare menu up at the top and click on the CompuWare menu and go down to Expediter and click on Expediter. And it opens up the Expediter menu. Another way would be to click on the Open Perspective button, and then you would scroll down and choose Expediter, and then say OK to open the Expediter Perspective. But let's say that we've got these views down here that we've closed out. So let's say we close out the console and breakpoints and variables. And we want to get it all back to the uh, way it was shipped. I can right click on Expediter Perspective up here at the top and say Reset and say Yes Reset Perspective and then just close out the cheat sheets and we're right back to our Expediter Perspective the way it's, it's shipped with the product. So Ed, Let's say I'm a new user. What's the fastest way to set up a batch program to test in Expediter? Great question, Ward. One way that you can add a new debug configuration would be go to Host Explorer, find your JCL, and right click on it, and then go to Debug As, and then choose Expediter Batch Debug Session, since this is a batch program. And notice Expediter and Topaz filled all the information out for me. Since I only had one step, it went ahead and checked that one step. If I had multiple steps, I would go down and choose one or more steps to, that I want to debug. I'm going to click on Debug and say OK. And at this point, I am debugging my code. Hey Ed, do you mind if I jump in here? I just want to mention that one of the main benefits of Topaz is that unlike working in the ISPF interface, the developer had to remember all of the commands and remember which commands are appropriate for where they are in the code. With Topaz, everything's just a right click away. Exactly. And I just right clicked and you can see how we have all the commands that are available to us up at the top. So we can toggle breakpoints. We can either do it from the right click or for toggle breakpoints, we can actually double click over here in the margin and it will set the breakpoints for us. So a single red dot means a um, before breakpoint. Double click it again, we'll remove it. If I go back and right click again, I can set conditional breakpoints and that's going to be line specific to where I could say set this conditional breakpoint. I can also toggle a skip point. So if I don't want a statement to be executed, I could toggle a skip point and say, don't, don't execute that statement until I turn that toggle off. So maybe you've got like a record that's being updated or code that's uh, doing updates to your file or database. You can skip that update so that it won't update the file or database, for instance. We can also set a global win, and we'll see that here shortly. You can also run to a certain line. So like if you've got an if statement and it wants to go down the true path, you can force it down the, the false path by doing a run to on the false path. And we can set the line as next statement. It's one of my favorite commands. It's like a go-to command, or it is the go-to in 3270 world. Except here, you don't have to remember the commands. It's just a right-click away. And then watch variables. If I choose watch variables, 
on a statement down here. Let's do it on this one down here. Right click, add watch variables. He's going to show me the variables that are available from that statement. And I could check one or both of them, or I could go by name by clicking on the radio button, and then I could choose whatever variables I want, and I can choose multiple ones. And those variables will show up in our variable window up in the upper right hand corner, which by the way, you can drag this and put it either on your other screen or somewhere else on your screen that you're looking at like I just moved it. Hey Ed, I know I'm setting you up a little bit here, but why don't you take a few minutes and talk about one of your favorite expediter capabilities, and that's the ability to record and play back code execution to resolve add-ins. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and this saves so much time. I'm going to make my program blow up by changing my PARM. So I just expanded out my PARM info and overtyped the data. So I've changed it from a 3 to a 2. I know this is going to blow up, so I'm going to come in and right-click. Again, right-click's your friend and say monitor all COBOL programs. This is actually going to turn on like a DVR recording or a camcorder recording to record everything we need to play your program forwards and backwards after the fact. And all I need to do now is just click on the green resume and let it execute. And if you notice I blew up and word wide I blew up is down here at the bottom because of a SOC 7. SOC 7 admin. And if you look up at the top right corner, the variable window, you'll see the variables are displayed based off of the statement that I'm on, along with my watch variables that we've added. We blew up on the statement add employee compensation, which is 1,000 to grand total imp, which is invalid packed. Now I could come in here and right click and say vertical hex display to see it in hex, but I really don't need to because I'm, I'm using the power of expediter. And what do I mean by that? I'm going to right click again, you're kind of a common thread here, right click, set win condition, and I'm going to type in that variable name that's bad, and it's right here in the variable window, grand-total-imp. That's all I need. Changes will be the default, but I could, if I wanted, if I'm testing something else, do equals less than or whatever. So I've got my win um, on. I'm going to click on this icon that became available after we started executing with my monitor turned on. And I'm going to click on this resume backwards with the line above it. That's going to say play back until a stoppage condition, which will be our win, or the program blows up for some weird reason, or at the top of my recording or the top of the program. And you can see that it stopped, and if I hover over the little icon on the left, you can see that it stopped because my win grand-total-imp kicked in. So moving uh-oh to region comment sub w imp or wa imp region made my grand total imp change. So let's take a look and expand out my region comment. So our, we're moving uh-oh, which is a literal to region comment sub wa imp region and you can see my region comment set up as an array of four but I'm trying to force a fifth in there and it, that's what's wrong. So we're going to set another what condition more? A win condition. Absolutely and that's a right click away. So we're going to right click, set win condition and my variable, I'm going to move this down just a little bit, my variable is wa imp region. And I'm going to leave it as changes, which is the default, so it will stop any time it changes. I'm going to hit the resume or review resume backwards, and it's going to play back. And if you hover over again, that little icon to the left is telling you why we stopped, and we stopped because of a win condition, my WA imp region changed. So if we look over at WA imp region, it's two. And if you remember, it was what word? Five. You're exactly right. So if I play down, because we, remember we're, we're playing off the recording, if I play down one statement, we now have the five in there. And where'd this five come from, Lord? A file. And how'd you know that? I just read the highlighted line. Which says, read employee file into employee work area. So 
what we just did, we were able to pinpoint the exact error, the exact file, the exact record, and the exact field within that record that caused our error. That's great. Is there also a way to access any information that Avondade may have had about this error? Absolutely, Ward, and believe it or not, it's click away. There's an icon up here. It says View Avondade Report when you hover over it. If you click on it, it's going to open up Avondade um, down here at the bottom. I'm going to double click to make the screen large. Sign on. And here you can see the um, the um, Avondade report. And if you notice, it has analysis of the error. If you scroll on down, program information, you scroll on down, call trace. And then if you get all the way down to supporting information, you can even go into the file section. Click on that. If you remember, our issue was a file, right? Do you right. remember what file it was? Employee file. Right Employee there. file. You got it. So if I click over on the, the um, left-hand side on the menu and choose record image you can see here's the current record which has the bad value in it there's the five and here's the previous record that we saw which had the two in it and there it is you got it so yes you can definitely take advantage of the Avonday's knowledge when um, in ex with an expediter Ed this has been great I think most of the people on the webcast know that the capabilities you've presented thus far have been available in expediter for quite some time so far, we've reviewed how to invoke an expediter perspective in Topaz, how to set up an expediter test session. We've reviewed the right-click expediter commands in Topaz, highlighted Topaz's ability to remember breakpoints and watch variables, and also how to use the record and playback capability within expediter to resolve ABNs and shorten test cycles, and finally, take advantage of Avondate's diagnostic information from a single click. Now what I'd like to move to is the portion of the presentation that focuses on some of the net new capabilities specific to program analysis. This functionality is provided by combining capabilities from both Expediter and Topaz and is very valuable in assisting newer developers in understanding the applications of programs they'll be supporting or a business an analyst in scoping a project. So Ed, what does a developer need to do to begin taking advantage of some of the program analysis capabilities? Yes, it's real easy, More, um, Just go into Window, Preferences, Expand Out Copyware, and then go down to Expediter, and just check to make sure that the editor that is pointing to where it says Editor to Use for Source Display is the Copyware Editor powered by Slick Edit, and not the Expediter Editor. And just to clarify for the folks on the phone, CompuWare has licensed the Slick Edit editor on your behalf. So if you've installed the Topaz Workbench, Slick Edit is also installed with it and available to you for use. So Ward, before we jump into program analysis, I'm going to close out this section by reviewing Expire Code Coverage. So let me show you how to turn this on and then we'll come back to it later. To do that, we're going to do the drop down next to the debug icon. Go to Debug Configurations, and it's as simple as going over here to the Show List and going to Code Coverage and flipping it on with the checkbox. Notice my repository system name and test ID. Those are the exact same ones if you are using Code Coverage on the mainframe. The other item that I want to turn on, if I go to the um, show more and go to target is the visualization. This is a simple check in the checkbox and what this is going to do is visualize the, your program as it's running. So I'm going to apply and debug, sign on, and as you can see a new window has popped up. It's this runtime visualizer window over here. I'm going to actually drag it over here. And we've started, we're at the root, and we're in our mainline program right now. You can see that over here. So, several things. As I start executing, this uh, runtime visualizer will actually start mapping out calls to programs, calls to databases, calls to files, and the like. 
and also give us both summary and detail level of our uh, program as it's running that we can look at afterwards. We have the capability of doing a right click, which you've seen before, but we're going to choose Perform Program Analysis. When I click on that, it actually went out and did analysis on my active running program and created a program structure chart. And if I double click the tab, it will make it big. So I can start to see the structure chart of my code. And if I double click the tab again, it will bring it back down to size. Single clicking through the structure chart will take me to that point in the code. So if I click single click on this 9,000 open, it takes me to that paragraph. And also down here on logic flow, it shows me the logic flow within that paragraph. So if I click on this 635 open, it takes me to that. And there's a the um, DD that it's going after on that open. I can also go over into data flow. And if I do the drop down, here's all my variables. And if I choose my favorite one, date dash YY. we can see how date YY is um, impacted throughout the whole program. So here is where it's defined. And if I uncheck some of these um, to minimize some of the data up front, and then I'll turn them back on. So we have date YY where it's defined, reg run year where it's defined. If I click the arrow, that's the connection between the two. It's a move statement. And I can also show the aliases by clicking on the show aliases icon, which I had on earlier. And here's reg run year, region header, and there's how that's impacted by clicking on the arrows. If I click on show all depths, it will actually show me all the movement of that code or of that um, variable throughout my code. I can also see it in table format. And if I double click the data flow tab, I can sort by say depth. And you can see that there's a, uh, two depths, zero and one. This could get quite deep. So if A's move to B, B's move to C, C's move to D, it will map all that out for you. We also have the ability to display an outline view and navigate by way of the outline view. It's right up here. Here's all my paragraphs within the Eclipse framework. Their reference is functions, but here's all my paragraphs. So like here's the data, um, read input. So I can just double click, navigate by way of the outline view. Let's go back to the expediter perspective. I can click on the open DDIO down here at the bottom and pull up or set a breakpoint in one of my call modules. Let's set it in this date module. So I'm going to say set initial and exit breakpoints with a right click on that module. And if you notice over here, it opened up my module and set the breakpoints. So I'm going to hit play, which is that resume button. And notice now it stopped and it stopped in my CWXT date. If I go back to that runtime visualizer, you remember, it's been building out during this run. You can see that CWXT Cobb called CWXT date, and if I hover over the one, it called it one time. So let's go back into CWXT date and remove that breakpoint. I can either double click it or I could come up here to my breakpoints and let's just uncheck it and uncheck it. So now, one more, and now when I hit play, we've stopped on the go back over in my mainline module, and if I pull up the runtime visualizer, you can see now that CWXT date was called 18 times, report file, I opened it once and wrote 28 records to it. And if I move this up a little bit, the employee file, I opened it once, 
read 20 records from it. And then finally, my CWXT sub C, I called it eight times. I'm going to hit stop because we're done. And if I go look at code coverage, and if you remember, we turned code coverage on. So if I go look at code coverage, it's going to be, since I don't have that perspective open, comp you were up at the top, code coverage. And my code coverage report um, system name was called payroll. I've already got a report set up. So I'm just going to double click on my report. And we can see right away that the risk factor is red. And what's that tell you, Ward? Well, it tells you one or two things is true. You either have new or you have modified code that has not been exercised. Exactly right. And we can drill down and see exactly the module or modules that we need to focus in on. In our case, it's the red 875 that's on CWXT COP. So if I double click that, we've got the program that pulled up. And down below, we can see that we've got 11 unexecuted statements that are critical. In other words, that have modified or new code that has not been executed. And in our case, it's this management section. So right away, we can identify real quick, oh, wait a second. In this case, we need a management record in order to uh, complete our testing of our changed or added code. Thanks, Ed. Before we move on to our question and answer portion of the presentation, just thought I'd take a second to summarize the key capabilities that Ed reviewed today. We talked about how to you know, open an expediter test session within Topaz. We reviewed the right-click expediter commands that are available in Topaz. Ed also highlighted Topaz's ability to remember breakpoints and watch variables, as well as how to leverage expediter record and playback capability to resolve admins and actually shorten test cycles. Uh, it also showed how to take advantage of the fault diagnostic information available in the admin data reports from just a single click, and then how to use Topaz program analysis with Expediter to provide uh, code analytics and very detailed analysis information about the code. And then finally, we reviewed Expediter code coverage, which confirms that all new. Before we start answering your questions, we would like to again encourage everyone to fill out the short survey to be entered to win a $50 American Express gift card. Again, we will be selecting three winners from today's respondents. And with that, we're going to start our Q&A. Give me a moment to uh, sort through them. Several good questions came in while the presentation was playing. All right, first question. Your expediter example was batch. Can you also use expediter and Topaz with the CICS program? Thanks, Janet. This is Ed. And absolutely, yes, you can. You can um, definitely use it just as you would in the, um, on the bat or on the mainframe 3270 screens. Let's see, does Expediter or Topaz have capabilities to automate unit tests? I'll take that one, Janet. This is Glenn Everett. <clears throat> and we have a new product called uh, Topaz for Total Test, and it integrates with Expediter. Expediter does a great job of giving us visibility in the program and allows us to collect the, the test data. And uh, we can automatically take that test data and <clears throat> excuse me, j generate a unit test case based on the data collected by Expediter. So yeah, it's, uh, we're very excited about that product. Happy to talk to anyone about that. Great. Thanks, Glenn. Let's see what else we have here. Um, how can we expedite web service programs? Uh, essentially, you would go through and um, you would go through the expediter CICS on Topaz setup. You can set up breakpoints for um, however it's coming into the CICS region, whether it's coming from the web or 3270 screen. All right. Thank you, Ed. Um, and another one. Does key does, I'm sorry. Does Expediter support PL1? And Ed, do you want to take yes, that no. one? 
Yes, it does. Okay, great. The okay. only caveat on that is they would need the PO1 license key so that if they're able to debug through um, Expediter on the mainframe, a PO1 program, then they should be fine. Right. Next question, does the DDIO get created automatically or, or so that you can view its info under Avondate? That really depends on how the shop is set up. Uh, again, if they have the uh, source listings available on the green screen while they're debugging, then Topaz would pick up on that. Um, if they have uh, an Avondade report that they're looking at and the source is available, then um, Topaz would pick up on that as well. It, um, but it really depends on how the client has the DDIO set up because the programs would need to be compiled with CompuWare for the source to be represented. All right. well, and, but I think there's also a, a little bit more to that answer too. And you know, that we've got some new capabilities with embedded source support too, so that can keep your source support with the files. All right, next question. Um, is there any documentation with instructions for using Expediter in CICS environments? I think that's one for you, Ed. Yeah, um, I was, um, for Topaz, essentially, it's just setting up a, um, a debug configuration and giving us the region and the program that you want to trap and then how you want to trap it. Um, I would just say uh, we can reach out to them and, and help them through that. Okay, yeah. Well, there's, there is written documentation, but... Yeah. I was going to say there's help under um, Topaz as well on that, as well as right. our um, our uh, videos. All right, I think we've got time for maybe one or two more. We want to be uh, aware of everybody's, uh, sensitive of everybody's time today. Um, let's see. Uh, next question. Is everything code jobs and load module on mainframe or is it local? So, in other words, where's where's the stuff running under Expediter? Yeah, good good question. Um, Expediter is actually being executed on the mainframe, and then Topaz is running on the client side and doing the GUI representation of it. So it will get back information from the mainframe, and then it will format it um, for the PC to display it back. So, but the program and everything is running on the mainframe with the user security that they would normally have um, rack up or ACF two wise. Great, thanks Ed. And um, one more question before uh, we go. And again, a reminder that any unanswered questions that come in, we will definitely reach out directly. But in the meantime, next question is, how does code coverage identify changed or modified code? Yeah, I can take that. Uh, there's a couple of ways. Number one, if they're marking their code in like 1 through 6 or 73 through 80, we could uh, set up a filter for that, that we will then identify the change code that way. And also, we have a method of being able to flag mod change or modified code or added code uh, by comparing one DDIO file to another. So say you're at Devel and you made your change you can compare that file, DDIO file, to say production file, and then we'll mark inside our DDIO file, we don't touch your real source, some markings to let us know which lines were changed or added, and then we can pick off or um, go off of that marking and uh, identify the code that was changed or added. Great, thanks, Ed. Um, once again, uh, we encourage everyone to fill out the survey before you, you uh, depart today. Um, we appreciate your attendance during this broadcast. If you experienced any technical difficulties, there will be a replay that will be sent with additional resources for you as well. Again, thanks for attending today's webcast. And I, once again, for those questions that we didn't get to, we will make sure to reach out directly to you. This concludes our presentation today. Enjoy your day.